and g of n are two functions, then what is big O of g of n? Big O of g of n is a set which contains all functions in n, say f of n, such that order of growth of f of n is either equal to g of n or smaller than that of g of n. It is analogous to less than or equal to. Similarly, big omega, this is analogous to greater than or equal to. Similarly, we have theta, that is analogous to equal to equal to. Little o, that is strictly less than. Little omega, that is strictly greater than. That's what we discussed in the previous class. Now, what is, when we say that f of n is big O of g of n, we already saw if there exist two constants, c and n are such that f of n is less than or equal c into g of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught, then we say that f of n is big O of g of n. This we covered in the previous lecture. And how to show that if a function, for example, 7 n plus 1 is big O of n. That is, we need to find the two constants, c and n naught, such that the given limit quality becomes true. Okay, that we saw in the previous class. Next one. Next. When do we say that f of n is big omega of g of n? f of n is big omega of g of n. So we have already saw that f of n is big O omega of g of n. So when we say that f of n is big O omega of g of n, that means order of growth of f of n should be greater than or equal to order of growth of g of n. That is, order of growth of f of n should be greater than or equal to order of growth of g of n. Okay, this definition it is in formal definition. Then what, what is the formal definition? Formal definition is in the, similar to the Gonega notation. Here we also we should be able to find the two constants c and the n naught. c and the n naught such that what is the condition it has to satisfy? It has to satisfy f of n's order of growth is greater than or equal to order of growth of g of n. This is from, we got it from informal definition. But here it is true for any constant c, some constant c. For all n greater than or equal to n naught. That is, we say that f of n is big omega of g of n. If and only if there exist two positive constant c and n naught such that f of n is greater than or equal to c into g of n. 
Tarali and Gary Tarali Koi can not. That's what is That's what is explained here. F of n is greater than or equal to c into g of n for all n greater than or equal to n. Now, if I draw the graphical, show the graphical representation for this, F of n value is numerically more than c times g of n. So, F of n comes above c times g of n. Here, n is input size. So, that is formal definition of big omega matrix. So, we see an example. Now, let us show that so that so that say for example an example example so that so that n into n plus one by two is big omega of n square n into n plus 1 by 2 is big omega of 1 square. So, according to this inequality, we need to find constant. So, what is the here? Proof. Proof. What is the here? f of n is n into n, by n plus 1 by 2. That if we simplify, it is 1 by 2 into 1 square plus 1 by 2 times n. And what is g of n? g of n equal to n square, n square. Now, first of all, is it true or not? Yes. Why? What is the order of growth here? n square. What is the order of growth here? n square. Both are same. Both are same means equal to, uh, according to this condition, it is true. It is true. Now, how to prove this? To prove this, we need to find the two constants, c and n naught, such that inequality 1 satisfies. Then can you tell me what are the constants I need to choose? What f of n is say one side I have one by two. Oh sorry. One side I have one one by one by two times n square plus 1 by 2 times n, 1 by 2 times n, that should be greater than or equal to some constant into g of n. g of n is n square for all n greater than or equal to some constants. These two values, this question mark and this is also question mark. These two values we need to find. Now can you guess what, what are the values I need to choose for C and then not. If I choose 1 here, is it correct? 1 by 2 into n square plus 1 by 2 into n. Is it greater than or equal to 1 into n square? For example, if you check, n equal to 1. What is this value? At n equal to 1. 1 by 2, 1 square plus 1 by 2 into 1 which is 1, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2, that is 1. 1 is greater than or equal to 1, correct. n equal to 2, 1 by 2, 2 square, plus 1 by 2, 2, that is 2 plus 1, 3. Here it is 4. 2 is greater than or, uh, 3 is greater than or equal to 4, wrong. That is, here 1, it is impossible. It is impossible. Then what is the value I need to choose? Because here it is addition. Now, instead of choosing some other value, you choose only 1 by 2 n square here. This is 1 by, this is 1 by 2 n square plus 1 by 2 n. n is not negative. So, if I choose c equal to 1 by 2 n square, this value will be true for any value of n. That is, finally, what I am saying is 1 by 2 into n square plus 1 by 2 into n is greater than or equal to 1 by 2 into n square for all n greater than or equal to 0, for all n greater than 0. Is it satisfying this inequality? Yes. What is c value here? 1 by 2. What is n naught value here? 0. Therefore, c equal to 1 by 2. n naught equal to 0. Therefore, by the formal definition of big omega notation, 
1 into n plus 1 by 2 is big omega of n square. Hence it is proved. Hence it is proved. Hence it is proved. So now we will see some other examples. So that will show that 7 n square minus 6 n minus 56 is big omega of n square. Big omega. Is it true or not? Yes. Why? Because 7 n square minus 6 n minus 56. What is the order of growth here? Order of growth here is m square. This is order of growth here is m square. Both have same order of growth. If both have same order of growth, then this condition is true. That is true. So that's why. Now how to prove this? Again, this is let this is f of n. 7 m square minus 6 m minus 56. G of n is Sorry, G C G R N is M square. G R N is not the big omega of M square. G R N is M square. Now we need to find the two constant C and N naught such that this inequality becomes true. This inequality becomes true. That is 7 M square minus 6 N minus 56. 7 M square minus 6 N minus 56. Example example 7 n square minus minus 6 n minus 56 7 n square minus 6 n minus 6 n minus 56 it is so that is big omega of n square. We know that it is true. Then how to prove this? Proof. What is f of n? f of n equal to 7 n square minus 6 n minus 56. What is g of n? And g of n equals to n square. Now if I want to show this, what is that I need to find? According to the formal definition, I need to find two constant C and N naught such that minus 56 is less than or equal to some constant C into M square for all N greater than or equal to some constant. These two constants I need to find. These two constants I need to find. Then how to find this? How to find this? If I substitute one, is it correct? Oh, sorry, this is this is not greater than or equal to. This definition is greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Then how to find the constant? If I substitute one here, is it correct? No. Why? Because seven n square it is more than n square. It is not correct. Is what is the other value? If I substitute 7 here, is it correct? 7 also it is wrong. Why? Because you are subtracting some value from this. That's why it is wrong. Next, then what should I do? Now, for example, is it possible to take 8 here? 8. Is it correct? 8. If I take 8 here, one side I have 7 and square minus 6n minus 56 8n square 8n square for all n greater than or equal this value I need to fix we need to fix now n equal to 0 what is this value? negative value here itself it is mistake n equal to 1 again negative n equal to 2 again negative value n equal to 9 again negative value n equal to 10 here you will get, if n equal to 10, what is the value you get? 10 square. 10 square means 700 minus 60 minus 56 greater than or equal to 10 means 8 into 10 square. 800. This is also wrong. n equal to 10 also it is wrong. Then what should we do? Now if you observe carefully here, now this, this is, inequality can be written as 7 m square minus 6 
16 plus 56 it should be greater than or equal to 7m square plus n square 7m square plus n square or this can be written as plus minus 6m minus 56 this is minus 56 now if you know that this value is greater than or equal to n square because this 7 n square 7 n square both are same if this value is greater than or equal to n square always you, this entire value will be more than this value that means what that is minus 6n minus 56 should be greater than or equal to n square. Is it possible? It is impossible. Why? n is positive. n is positive. That means with 8 we are not able to find this. With 8 we are not able to find this. Then what is the other option? What is the other option? 9 that also not fun. Then what should I do? So here, if I take 6, if I take 6, then what happens is, seven m square minus 6m minus 56, should be greater than or equal to 6m square. That means this can be written as 6m square plus m square minus 6m minus 56 should be greater than or equal to 6m square. Now this 6m square, 6m square gets cancelled. That means what is the final we get this part remains. If this part is greater than or equal to 0, this entire value will be greater than or equal to this value. That means n square minus 6m minus 56 should be greater than or equal to 0. Now if this is quadratic equation then what is value of n? n equal to minus b because this is ax square plus bx plus c form no. Then what is the value of x? x is minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2 times a then what is the value of n here minus b means minus of minus 6 plus r minus b square means minus 6 whole square minus 4 a means 1 1 into m square c means minus 56 b, minus square, b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4 a c by 2 times a that is 2 that is what is the value of n 6 plus r minus 6 square means 36 minus into by is plus 200 now 4, 4 into 6 24 that is means 224 2 24 divided by 2 divided by 2 that is n cannot be so what is this value 6 plus r minus, this is 200, 220, 250, 260, 260 by 2, 260 square root of 260 by 2. What is square root of 260? 15, 15, 15, 15 is 225, 6, 15, that is 15. It is six, smaller than 16. So if you take it as 6, six plus 16 by 2, that is 6 plus 16 to 2, 11, that is take greater than or equal to 12. If I take n equal to 12 here, that is n equal to 12, what is the value this side? This side it is 12 square. This part I am only calculating this part, whether it is greater than or equal to 0. 12 square minus 6 into 12 6 into 12 minus 56 12 square is 144 minus 12 6 72 this is 56 this is smaller than 1 8 
128. This is smaller than this. That means this value is greater than equal to 0. So now finally, what is the value? So you can choose C equal to 6 and N not equal to 12. This is one, one answer. Different answers are possible. Different answers are possible. Only the problem comes when there are negative terms in the expression. That is, if there are negative terms like this, then only problem. If all terms are positive, it is very easy to calculate. If all terms are positive, it is very easy to calculate. For example, show that uh, 7m square plus 8m plus 9 is big omega of m square. Then how to show this? Is it true or not? Yes. Correct. Then how to show this? This is simply you can say that 7m square plus, because all terms are positive, 8m plus 9. I can say that it is greater than or equal 7m square, because the first two terms here, 7m square. For all m greater than or equal 0, what? Here, c is 7, n not equal to 0. Over. So therefore, by the formal definition of big one, big one mega notation, it is true. It is true. If, if it is only n, then how to show this? Then also it is correct. If it is only n, then also it is correct. So if all terms are positive, that means only if there are some negative terms, it is big. It takes some time. That is about the goal. So we have the, so we have given some other option C equal to 1. We are not equal to 5. This option also it works. This option also it works. Next, what is theta notation? What is theta notation? We have the informal definition we have already seen. We say that f of n is theta of g of n if both have <coughs> same order of growth. F of n and g of n both have same order of growth. That is. But then how to formally prove that to show that so f of n is theta of g of n. That means what? F of order of that means Order of the growth of f of n is same as same as order of the growth of g of n. Then how to prove this? That means what? For example, if you are asked to prove so, a equals to b. What is one method of proving this is somehow you show that a is less than or equal to b. Next, you show that A is greater than or equal to B. Now, from this two, we can conclude that from one and two, we conclude that A must be saved as B. This is one way of showing A equal to B. A equal B. Now, here also same thing. The part of is theta of G of N means what? The part of is A, for example, theta G of N is B. If I want to show this, some of you show this. This is nothing but First to show that, show order of the growth of f of n is less than or equal to order of the growth of g of n. That is one part. Next to show order of the growth of f of n is greater than or equal to order of the growth of g of n. This is two. What does this one mean? It means f of n's order of growth is smaller than G of n are same as G of n. That means according to the definition of formal definition of big O notation, you can write this as F of n and big O of G of n. We are actually showing this way. What does this mean? This means F of n is R of beta F of n is equal or more. That means it is nothing but big O beta, big O beta of G of n. Now we conclude from 3 and 4 that O of R can be theta of G of N. Theta of G of N. Then, if you have to be equal to the O of G of N, that means what? 
if if f of n is big o of g of n big o of g of n that implies what then there must exist two constants according to the formal definition c and n not such that f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n for all n greater than or equal to n not this is the meaning of that so this is called as that now similarly if f of n is equal to big o of g of n then what does it mean according to the formal definition there exist two constants a part n should be greater but if that constant may not be same may not be same then that's why if you take c1 and n1 here then here you can take c2 and n2 c2 into g g of n for all n greater than or equal to n2 Now from 5 to 6, you can combine this into single inequality. That is, in both equations, a part n is present, and here c2 into g of n is more, or a part n is more. A part n is more. So c2 into g of n, you can write this way. This side it is c1 into g of n is more. C1 into g of n is more. You should have written two separately. Can you? And for all greater than n greater than or equal to, if it is one is true for n one and s one, this is n one. From all for all this value, it is true. This is true for n two. For example, if n two is here, this is true for all values here. Then both will be true for this this part common part. Where the common part is nothing but two n two. That is maximum of this two n greater than or equal to some other say n not. Where n not is this. So if you can find the three constants, this is formal definition. If you can find the three constants, c1, c2, and the n not such that the above inequality becomes true, here it can be c1 also, or whatever you want, you can do. This can be c2 also. That is your wish. Okay, what is it? That is one constant, one constant here. If this even, but when you are in the inner also, if you want, you can change. But that is our wish. Anything is okay. So this is the formal definition of big omega uh, theta notation. Sorry, theta notation. That's what is given here. The part of the theta of G of n, you find the value. There exist positive constants c1, c2, and n not such that c1 into G of n less than or equal to f of n less than or equal to c into into G of n for all n n less than or equal to n not. Now, if I represent the pictorial image here, that is which is smallest, smallest is C1 into G of n. That comes below. Which is largest C2 into G of n. That comes above. But if I can, it is middle of these two. That's all. Okay. So that is the definition of theta notation. Formal definition of theta notation. Now, how to show that? One way of showing, for example, so that, so that, so that, example, so that n into n plus one by two is theta of n square. So that n into n plus one by two is theta of n square. Then how to prove this? That means what? R of the of this and this both are same. They say a part n equal to n into n plus one by two. That means one by two times n square plus one by two times n. And g of n is n square. And g of n is n square. Now according to the formal definition of formal definition of definition of theta notation, what should we have? What is that we need to find? We need to find three positive constants c1, c2, and n not such that the part n, that is c1, some constant c1 into g of n, g of n is n squared, is less than or equal to the part n. The part n is one by two into n squared plus one by two into n. 
less than or equal to some constant into n square for all n greater than or equal to some other constant. Here you need to find one concept. Now can you guess what are the values here? This value should be smaller than this. The same type we have discussed, you know, when we talked about the big goal notation. So here what are the values that you can put? This value should be more than this value. So if I change here 1 by 2, definitely this value is more. But this value should be more than this. This value should be more. Then what is that you can put? This is 1 by 2 into n square. This is 1 by 2 into n. Here, whatever value you choose, this should be greater than 1 by 2 into 1 by 2. Now this example also, I think we have already discussed. So 1 by 2 into square plus 1 by 2 into n. So this can be written as, this is rough work, so 1 by 2 into n square plus 1 by 2 into n. Less than or equal to n square can be written as 1 by 2 into n square plus 1 by 2 into n square. Okay. Now 1 by 2, 1 by 2 gets cancelled. So 1 by 2 into n is always less than or equal to 1 by 2 into n square. So that means here even if I substitute 0 also it is correct. This inequality also becomes true. This inequality also. So here I can choose 1. Therefore our C1 is 1 by 2. C2 is 1 and n naught is 0. n naught is 0. Therefore, by the formal definition of theta notation, f of n is theta of g of n. Theta of g of n. Now, here, here is an example. So n into n minus 1 by 2 is theta of n square. If there are minus sim parts, then it, it is relatively difficult to actually find that constants. All possibilities it is very really easy. Within seconds you, you can complete that. It is negative, for example in this case see, n into n minus 1 by 2 is theta of n square. We know that it is correct. We know that it is correct. Now we need to find that the three constants. See, n into n minus 1 by 2 is 1 by 2 into n square minus 1 by 2 into n. It is less than or equal to 1 by 2 n square. Why? Because we are subtracting some value from this. Some value from this. Next, 1 by 2 into n square minus 1 by 2 into n. Greater than or equal to 1 by 2 into n square minus 1 by 2 n. All the way to z. Again, I am multiplying that with say 1 by 2 into n. That means I am subtracting more value. If I subtract more value, this side value will be less greater than here I am subtracting it is 1 by 2 into n, one more time 1 by 2. So this is 1 by 2 into n square minus this is 1 by 4 times n square. 1 by 2 into n square minus 1 by 4 times n square. If I subtract then I will get 1 by 4 into n square. Now what is the value finally? So here if, if this is the first value, this is 1 by 2 is second value. So this if I combine this, this is 1 by 4 into n square, less than or equal to n by n into n by square, 1 by 2 n square. This therefore by the formal definition of uh, theta notation, we, we obtain what is C1, C2 and n naught. Hence it is true. Hence it is true. Next we move on to other notation. What is that other notation? Little more notation. So little more notation was when we say that f of n is little more of g of n, example, n square is little more of n cube, is it true or false? Little more means strictly lower than. That is, this order of growth is smaller than this. Is it correct? Yes, it is true. It is true. That means order of growth is strictly this. So one way of defining this is that is little o. So we say that f of n is little o of g of n if and only if if and only if limit n tends to infinity f of n by g of n 
equals to can you guess what is the value of this what is the value of this what is the value so what is the value of that the first term is What is the value? I have already given an example also. That is, m square is little o of m cube. m square is little of m is m square. g of m is m cube. g of m is m cube. Then what is the value of limit 10 tends to? What is this value? Limit 10 tends to infinite. m square. m square. m cube can be written as m square into m. m square into m. m square m square gets cancelled. Then this is limit n tends to infinity 1 by n limit n tends to now what is the value of 1 1 by limit n tends to infinity 1 by n if n is very large if denominator increases overall this value gets reduced low if it is infinite then what is this value this is zero that's what I asked you that's what I asked that is limit n tends to infinity apart n by f n is zero. That is the definition of little o notation. That is the Now, you know what is this example. That is the definition of little o notation. That's what is given here. That is, a function f of n is little o of g of n equal only if limit n tends to infinity f of n by g of n is 0. 0. That is g. I have asked you to uh, I expected this answer, but uh, okay. Next, so that 7 m square plus 8 m plus 9 is little o of m cube. 7 m square plus 8 m plus 9 is little o of m cube. It is so that example is so that 7 m square plus 8 m plus 9 is little o of m cube little o of n cube. Is it true or not? Yes, it is true. Why? Because here order of growth is n square, order of growth is n square, here order of growth is n cube, n cube. So it is less than or equal to this. That's why it is correct. Then how to prove this? How to prove it? To prove we require formal definitions. For understanding, we don't require informal definitions, but you know, even informal definitions will do. But to prove, show that something is correct here of this type of things, then you need formal definitions. So then how to show this? So we have seen that f of n is little o of g of n, if and only if, f of n is if and only if, Limit 10 tends to infinity f of n by g of n is 0. Now what is f of n here? f of n is 7 n square plus 8 n plus 9. And g of n is n cube. And g of n is n cube. Now we, if we can show this then we can conclude that yes it is correct. Now what is limit n tends to infinity f of n by g of n? That is limit n tends to infinite 7n square plus 8n plus 9 divided by n cube divided by n cube. Now what is this value? This is equal to limit n tends to infinite. Yes, common part is here n square n square I can take common no n square, numerator n square, 8 plus, if I take n square here it becomes 8 by n, if I take n square from 9, it becomes 9 by n square, 9 by n square. Here if I take this, n square if I take common, then remaining part will be n. Now this n square, this n square gets cancelled. Now what is the value of that? limit n tends to infinity 1 by n into 7 plus 8 by n plus 9 by n square. What is limit n tends to infinity 1 by n? We know that that is 0. 
What is limit n tends to infinity? 7, 7. What is limit n tends to infinity? 1 by n, 0. Already 8 is there, 8 into 0. This is 9. Already 9, 1 by n square, 1 by n itself is 0, 1 by n square also 0. So finally it is 0 into something that is 0. Limit n tends to infinity, apart n by dr n is 0. Therefore, by the formal definition of this, we conclude that f of n is little o of g of n. f of n is little o of g of n. That's what is shown here. That's what is shown here. For example, if you see, f of n is 7 square plus 8 n plus 9. g of n is n cube. Limit n tends to infinity. 7 n square plus 8 n plus 9 by n cube. n square we are taking common. Then what happens? This is 7 plus 8 by n plus 9 by n square. Here the n cube plus 32. Now this is one function. This is one function. This is some other function. Now what is order of growth here? Here order of growth is 2 power n. Order of growth is 2 power n. What is order of growth here? Here order of growth is n power 5. What is order of growth here? Order of growth here is log n whole cube. Whole cube. Okay. Out of this now you can easily say no. It, it says exponential function order of growth is more than polynomial function, more than polylogarithm. This has more order of growth, this has less, this has least. This, this is this is highest and this is lowest and this is middle. This is middle. What is what is the general form of this exponential function? That means its order of growth is say some say a power n. A power n when a is greater than one. When a is greater than one. Order of growth of polynomial means say n power b. This is say n power b. b is power input. Now what is that we are saying? This growth is more than this. That means what? n b is little o of a power n. n b is, that means limit n tends to infinity. Infinity of n by n power b by a power n is 0. Therefore by the formal definition it is true. If this is important, you please remember this. Remember this. That is to be more example. Let's say, I see to solve a problem, one student has given an algorithm whose running time is 2 power n. Another student has given an algorithm whose running time is say n power like this. Now, which algorithm is better? Which algorithm is better? So, for that, what is that we need to know? which has lower order of growth. Out of this which has lower order of growth, this is only having lower order of growth. That means this algorithm is very much faster when compared with this type of algorithm. So similarly, one student has given 1.58 power n time algorithm. Another student has given n power 1, 2, 3, 4, One student has given 1.5 1 power n time algorithm, another student has given n power 1 crore time algorithm. Out of these two which is faster, whose order of growth is lower, that algorithm is faster. Which has lower order of growth, this one only has lower order of growth. That's why this algorithm only faster. Another combination is polynomial and polylogarithm. Polynomial and polylogarithm. For example, one student has given an algorithm whose running time is log n. Another student has given an algorithm whose running time is n, which is good algorithm. Log n algorithm is very much faster. One student has given n log n time algorithm. Another student has given n squared algorithm, which is better. n log n only is better. Why? Because this n squared can be written as n into n. Now this n, this n gets cancelled. One side it is log n, one side n. We know that log n is smaller than n. See, one student has given algorithm whose running time is say 
log n whole power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1000, 10, 000, 1 lakh, 10 lakhs, 1 crore. Log n whole power 1 crore. Another student has given an algorithm whose running time is n power 0.0001. Which algorithm is faster? This algorithm is very much faster. This algorithm is very much faster. That is, in general, limit n tends to infinite, limit n tends to infinite, log n whole power, say, some b, divided by n power a, if I take, this value is smaller, this value is more, so it is 0. It is 0. So that is summarized here. For example, for all you will consider, limit n test to it to n power b by a power n. This is polynomial function, this is exponential function. But a value should be greater than 1. If a is less than 1, then what happens is, if it is between 0 and 1, if I increase the power, the value gets reduced. So this condition is not true. That's why a is greater than 1. Okay. Which implies that n power b is little of it. Now it only one student has given all the Whose running time is n power 4. Another student 2 power 0 0.5 n. Which is better? n power 4 is very much faster when compared with this. That's why this R log growth is lower than this. That's why this is correct. This is n squared R log growth. Here it is 1.5 power n. This is polynomial, this is exponential. That means polynomial is smaller than exponential. That's why it is correct. It is correct. So this is little omega notation which I have already explained. Same thing. Which I have plus plus 8 and plus 9 is because of the little omega of n. Limit n tends to infinity n power b by a power n. That means polynomial function exponential function. Polynomial function growth is smaller. Similarly, n if I replace with log n. Here also n with log n. Then finally what is that we get? Limit n tends to infinity log n power b by n power a is 0. This is polynomial is logarithm. This is normal polynomial. That means what? Polynomial in logarithm has lower half growth than actual polynomial function. That's why which implies a power n is little omega of a log n whole power b. Whole power Now it's a small theorem. If f of n is a m into n power m plus a m minus 1 into n power m minus 1 plus n is 1, a1 into n plus a dot. Then, f of n is big O of n power m. What does it mean? If I generalize, that is general case. So, specific case. For example, what is given me, there is hmm, 9n t plus 12n square plus 4n plus 6 is big O of n cube. Is it correct or not? Is it true or not? Yes. Why? Well, because this side also has the both n cube, this side also has the both is n cube. That is correct. Now, for example, if it is like this, 12 n square, that is 0 times n cube plus 12 n square plus 4 n plus 6. Is it big O of n cube? Is it true? This is not true. Why? Because 0 times n cube means it is. You should not say that this R graph growth is n cube. Why? Because you graph lower order terms. This is also lower order terms. Constant course in this, but in t. The center value itself is 0. No, you will be ignoring this. So it is R graph growth is n square. R graph growth is n square. But I am square is smaller than n cube, so it is also correct. So if a of n means a m into n power m plus a m minus 1 into n power m minus 1 plus n is 1, a 1 into n plus a dot, then f of n means big, big O of n power m. 
the gap and power yam if i want to show this then what is that i need to do i need to do the formal definition of asymptotic notation according to formal definition of asymptotic notation if i can find the two constants c and n not such that f of n is less than or equal to c to g of n for all n greater than or equal to n not then we conclude that f of n is the function is the of g of n now what is f of n here am n power m plus a m minus 1 n power m minus 1 plus it is a polynomial in n whose degree is m degree m polynomial is n so it is simple form short form it is like that sigma i equal 0 to m a i n power i here subscript to what i did there is here also power same thing here subscript to what i did there is here also same thing this can be written as a dot into n power 0 a1 into n power 1 that is correct no so i equal 0 to n a now here some values can be negative also that is example this, this can be 7 x square minus 6 n plus say 42 this is, this is i can say that this value is less than or equal to 7 x square plus 6 x plus 42 is it correct or not yes well there two terms also i am making i am making positive then definitely this value will be more than this value are equal to this value provided all values are positive already that's what is given here See, this value is less than or equal to I am taking mod for all values, all coefficients. That is, it is like this: seven n square minus six n plus forty-two. I can say that less than or equal to seven mod seven n square plus mod minus six n plus mod forty-two. Is it correct or not? Yes. So because all our courses are making fast too, fast too. So that's why it is less than or equal to this. Now n power i can be written as the factor is. A m n power m plus A m minus one n power m minus one plus n square plus A one into n plus A dot. This we can write it as less than or equal to sigma i equal to zero to m mod A i n power i. But n power i can be written as n power i can be written as n power I minus m into n power m n power i minus m into n power y because bases are same we will be adding powers i minus m minus m plus m gets cancelled so it is correct so this can be it is equal to sigma i equal to 0 to m mod a i here I am not saying less than or equal to it this expression this is what I said n power i minus m into n power i sorry sorry n power m now n power m is independent of i i can take it outside n power m into sigma i equal to 0 to m mod a i into n power i minus m that gene value of i is m so that means what this value is the one negative no this value is the one negative so now that means what that is some positive constant and this is this is sum of all coefficients so this also it is some positive constant so that means what i am able to find some constant such that so is the power will let that are called some constant into n power m for all n that are called some value the power is this so therefore by the formal definition of the board notation i can write the power n is big go of n power m n power m that's what we are asked to prove
আপনার ছোয়াটা হেন পরে সবাই যে পারবেন ডাক্তার সব দেখবেন ওটা This all we have discussed. If one more example, eight into n cube minus plus nine into n square minus six n plus four is. Omega of n cube. Is it correct? Is it correct? This is correct. Then, when this value is not zero. And this value is not zero. Or greater than one. Greater than zero. Greater than zero. Why? Because if it is zero, then what happens? This is 9n square minus 6n plus 4. That is big omega of n cube. Is it correct? This is false. Why? Because here R of growth is n square. Here R of growth is n cube. N, this is wrong. That's why this is wrong. But here, if this coefficient is greater than, because this is also n cube, this is also n cube, if it is greater than 0, then this is correct. It is correct. Similarly, what is this value? 9 into n power 10 plus 2 into n power 4 plus 5 into n, n square plus 6 equals 2 is big omega of n power 10. Is it true or not? Yes, it is true. Why? Because here R of both n power 10, here also it is R of both is n power 10. So similarly, this is equals to theta of n power 10. Is it correct or not? Yes, that is also correct. So, uh, because this is the highest order 10. That is highest order 10. That's what is related. Similarly, you can prove that if you have found the a m n power n plus a m minus 1 n power n minus 1 plus n plus 1 a 1 e n plus a naught and a m should be greater than 0. This, this should be followed. That condition should be true. In case of big O, that condition need not be true. But in case of but in case of o, big O omega and theta, a m should be greater than zero. Otherwise, that condition doesn't satisfy. Why? Because here you can see now. For example, if if this is zero into n power ten plus two times n power four. 5n square plus 6. Is it theta of n power 10? No, this is wrong. Why? Because here R of growth is only n power 4. This is n power 10. Both are not same. Both are not same. Both are not same. Okay. So, if, finally, point is, if you are given a polynomial whose degree is m, whose in n, whose degree is m, and the, the, the coefficient of highest degree term is not zero, then order of group of that polynomial is its degree only, n power its degree only. Now, so this is, this is the problem taken from introduction to algorithms by Palmer Search Coleman textbook. This is the exercise problem in Palmer Search Coleman textbook. Then, so indicate for each pair of expressions A, B in the table below, A, B, in that whether A is big O or big, little O or little o, uh, big omega or little omega or theta of B. Large n power k big group n power epsilon. Epsilon is greater than 0, c is greater than 1. k is greater than or equal to 1. So what is given to us? k 
K is greater than or equal to 1. C is greater than 1. X one is greater than 0. So part 1 is part A and B big O little O big Omega little Omega theta. This is our table. What is the first one given to us? This is log n whole power k. Log n whole power k is given. The other side, what is given? n power epsilon. n power epsilon is given. <coughs> this side it is n power epsilon. Out of these two, which one has a lower order of growth? Yeah, the, we, I have already mentioned this is polylogarithmic function. This is polynomial function. Always order of growth of polylogarithmic. This is order is exponential mode order of growth. Next to polynomial. Next to polylogarithmic function. Polylogarithmic. It is polynomial and logarithmic function. So it is polylogarithmic. It is here. Next one is. Polynomial, it is here, which has higher order of growth. This has more order of higher order of growth. This is greater. That is actually the relation is this order of growth is greater than this. Now it tell me whether they have asked whether A is big O of B or A is little O of B or here it is. A is big omega of B or A is little omega of B or here it is A is theta of B. We need to decide this. Now tell me A is that is large and whole power K is big O of n power epsilon. Is it true or not? Is it true or not? This has lower order of growth. This has higher order of growth. That means it is true. So this is true. It is actually less than or equal to all. It is less than or equal to. It is less than. It is greater than or equal to. It is greater than. This is equal to. Less than or equal. This is true. Yes. What about this? Less than or equal to true means less than is automatically true, no? So, so this is our last word point of view. Less than or equal to true, less than it is true. Sorry, this is, no, this is correct. It is less than or equal to true, correct? So less than true also becomes correct. Why? Because this is smaller than this. So this is also a yes answer. What about this? Yeah, for larger than one power k is big omega of n power epsilon is it correct? This is less. This is more. But according to big omega, here more value should be there. That means this is low. What about this? This is also low. What about this? Both are same or not? No. That means this is also low. This is also low. What, what next? What is the next function given to us? n power k c power n. n power k, one side n power k, another side c power n. n power k c power n. Which has higher order of growth? This is exponential because c is greater than 1. So this is exponential, this is polynomial. We know that polynomial has lower order of growth than all of c. Yes. Because this is also similar to this though. Not similar, same as that, a drop growth point of view. So table is same. Next is similarly you can try our third one. Root n, n power sin n. Let me explain. Because if you are given two real numbers A and B, 
ये बी ये नंबर्स ये नंबर्स दें ये दें ये नेट डाटा रिपोर्ट बी शुड बी ट्रू आप ये नेट डाटा रिपोर्ट बी फिर शुड बी ट्रू बट फॉर फंक्शंस या फॉर कैन एंड जी आर कैन नेट डाटा रिपोर्ट बी इस इट इज बिग बोर्ड हो बिग बो आप what is that we are saying get the error code this big old data this need not be true that is if you are given two numbers we can say the first number is less than or equal to second number or first number is less than or equal to second number this should be this should be true or this should be true but here it, it is not the case it is not the case for example you take your path and this n power 1 that is n g of n is n power 1 plus cos n cos n n power 1 plus cos n now what is this value cos n what is the range of cos function minus 1 to plus 1 if it is minus 1 what is this value n power 1 minus 1 this is n power 0 When it is plus one, this is n power one plus one. This is n square. This is n square. Now, which has higher order of four? See, here for some values of n, this growth is more than this. For some values of n, this growth is less than this. So now, is it possible to generalize? No. That means here the part of this big of here. Your part of this is big O of G of N. This is also not correct. Your part of this is big O beta of G of N. This is also not correct. This is also not correct. This is also not correct. Uh, now see, so what is that? What is root n n power sin n? So we have root n n power sin n. Now what is our graph got here? Sin n means what is the range of sin function? Sin function. This value is minus one to plus one. If it is minus one, this is n power minus one smaller than root ten. If it is plus one, n power plus one more than root ten. That is why sometimes it is more, sometimes it is less. So what is that? We can say it is no. That is into here it is no 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 no. We are not, we are not able to relate these two things. Similarly, you can complete the other things. Two power n, two power n by two. Two power n, two power n by two. Similarly, n power log c, c power log n, n power log c and c power log n. Both are same though. That means all are yes. No, not all yes. This is only yes. This is also yes. Big O also yes. Big O beta yes. Theta yes. Little O now, little O beta no. Log n factor L log n power n. This is also L log n. This is also L log n. Already we have seen. So L log n is all log n. Same this. Big O, big O beta, theta correct. Other so false. Two power n by two is smaller than two power n. Accordingly, you can fill the space. Yes. So this immediately this you can check. This are given in your first textbook. This are this is exercise problem in your first textbook. That is fundamentals of computer algebra by Horowitz and Sahari. This is exercise problem. Now you can this are two or false. Five n square minus six n is theta n square. It is true. Why because same are not true. N factor is the power of n power n. This is also true. Why because this is both. So this you can practice. All are true here. Already we covered this topics. This is also given in our first textbook that is introduction to all uh, fundamentals of computer algorithms by Horowitz and Sahari. This also we covered already. You can practice this problem also. You can practice this problem also. It is given in first chapter. Thank you.
अच्छा चैप्टर नेक्स्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ लीडियर सच अलगाटो कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ लीडियर सच अलगाटो सो दैट इज दिस इज लीडियर सच अलगाटो इन बेसिक इनपुट साइंस पैरामीटर इज एन हाउ डू यू इट साइड गिवन टू अस बेसिक कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इन दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स इन ऑपरेशन एंड वी ऑब्जर्व दैट वी ऑब्जर्व दैट इट्स वर्स्ट केस रनिंग टाइम इज आदर ऑफ ग्रोथ इज एन इट्स बेस्ट केस रनिंग टाइम आदर ऑफ ग्रोथ इज वन सो Linear such algorithm we have already discussed in the earlier classes. And the other half growth of worst case trending time of linear such is yen. And the other half growth of best case trending time of linear such is constant. Best case trending time is constant. Now I ask you some questions. Let's now this. Let's now this. And we represent the other half. This worst case running time and best case running time of linear such using our asymptotic notations. Now we are more familiar with asymptotic notations. We should be able to represent this using asymptotic notations. See, now I have given different examples. Same best case running time of linear such. Say one first one. Best case running time of linear such algorithm is big O of one. Big O of one. Is it correct or not? That is, we have already seen that worst case order of growth is n. Best case, it is with respect to linear such. Best case order of growth is What now? My question is: Best case, this is this best case. Best case, WC worst case. Best case, optimum running time. Say optimum running time. Running time. Best case running time of linear such. Algorithm which we discussed earlier is big O of one. Is it correct or not? Is big O of one? Is it correct or not? What is R plus O? Is the best case one? That is what best case at the time of is the best case it is one. One is same as big O of one. Is it correct or not? It is correct. Why? Because one can be written as one into the power zero. That is big O of one. That is correct. That is correct. Next, best case running time of linear such is is linear such algorithm. That is big O of one. Is it correct or not? Is it correct or not? Why? What is best case? It is. One, one means we got it through n power zero, n power zero. That is big O of larger. Is it correct? N power zero is big O of larger. This is also correct. Next, best case running time of linear such is such is big O of n. Is it correct? It is one. One means can be written as n power zero, n power zero is big O of n. This is also correct. That's what here I have given some more. See, best case running time of linear such is big O of n. Correct. Why because n power zero, n power zero is smaller than big O of n. So that's why it is correct. Best case running time of linear such is big O of n square. This is also correct. Best case running time of linear such is big O of n power hundred. This is also correct. Best case running time of linear such is big O of two power n because two power n is more than n power zero, so this is also correct. Best case running time of linear such is big O of five power n. N power zero is more than this, so it is also correct. Similarly, this is also correct. This is also correct. All are correct, but it is not. But it is not expressed using using like this. This is for your understanding. I am writing 
this way, all are correct. But out of this, which is your favorite answer? Your favorite answer is because this big boy notation gives upper bound. Upper bound must be as small as possible. Out of this, the small, smallest I use is one. So I think of this. This is my favorite answer. It does not mean that the other answers are wrong. The other answers are wrong. This case, the reason of any such is big boy of one. This is also correct. Why because f of 0 that is equal to the best case that is done of linear set is theta of 1 that is also correct f of 0 f of 0 is both are same best case that is done of linear set is big boy of log n that is wrong why is is big boy of log n big boy of log n this is wrong this is wrong why f of 0 this is log n F power 0 is not more than log n. No, that's why this is wrong. This is, see, this is F power 0. This is the goal of log n. Whatever is there this side, it should be greater than or equal log n or log n. But here the log n is smaller than log n. That's why it is not correct. This is the goal of the goal of the goal. This is also wrong. This is the goal of the goal of the goal. This is also wrong. This is also wrong. Similarly, what case does it turn out linear such is big O of 1? Is it correct? That is also not correct. Why? Because in the worst case, well, you have all, worst case, it is n. n. Now, n is, see for example, Worst case running time of linear such algorithm is big O of 1. This is wrong. Why? Because in the worst case, what is charge of 4? We have already seen n. n is big O of 1. We know that it is wrong. That's why this is wrong. Now, for example, worst case running time of linear such is linear such is big O of log n. Is it correct? This is also wrong. Why? Because what case it is n, this is the go of log n. That is also because this should be smaller than this or equal to this. This is also wrong. Now you can say what case running time of linear such is the go of n. Is it correct? Yes. Why? Because this is n. n means the go of n. We know that it is true. So then what case running time of linear such is <laughs> big O of n square. This is also correct. Why? Because n is big O of n square. Like this, you can represent running time in different, using different notation or same notation by changing the function. You should not memorize like first case running time of linear such is big O of n. This case running time is big O of 1. Once you understand asymptotic notations and the R-graph board, you can play with asymptotic notations. In different ways, running time you can represent. For example, here I have represented where red color, they show that they are not correct. Remaining all are correct. Remaining. That means worst case running time I have represented in 10 different ways here. The go also I represented, the go mega also I represented, theta also I represented. Is it okay? Is it correct or not? This is also correct. Why? Because here n, n is less than or equal to n. n less than or equal to n square. n less than or equal to n power n. n less than or equal to n factor n. Correct. n greater than or equal to 1. Correct. n greater than or equal to n power 0 pi 4. Correct. n greater than or equal to 0 pi 5. Correct. n greater than or equal to 0 pi 9. Correct. n greater than or equal to n. Correct. Now if I say, if it's such algorithm, it's big O big R of n square, then it becomes wrong. Why? Because n is greater than n equal to n square, it is wrong with respect to R graph growth. What case is the linear such a theta of root n? Root n means n power 0, 5, 5. Both are square. That's why it is wrong. Here it is theta of n. This is correct. This is correct. So I'll just stop here. In this class, we discuss formal definitions of remaining four asymptotic notations, big O, big O, big O, big O, 
theta little more than little more than that. And we have seen some examples on this part by how to show that the part of this big of g of n, how to show that the part of this big of g of n, the part of this little more than little more than that theta. Next to me has seen uh, some theorems on asymptotic notations. That is, you can give the polynomial whose degree is m is n, then it can be represented as big O of n power m, big O of little o of uh, theta of n power m, and big O of n power, power m. Next, we will discuss what is the running time of linear search algorithm under variety. Okay, so that is under best case and worst case. I just stop here. Thank you.